The war in Syria has been brutal. More than 200,000 people have been killed and millions displaced over the course of the conflict. The war has also been unusual in how it's been reported. It's been extremely difficult for foreign reporters to get into the country to chronicle what's happening on the ground. Many have relied on videos and photographs taken by Syrian civilians on their mobile phones and posted online to get a sense of what's happening. But it's not just traditional journalists who've done this. Elliot Higgins, also known as Brown Moses or Bellingcat, has become a leading authority on the conflict by monitoring sites like Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. From his home in Leicester in central England, he's used consumer technologies to piece together which weapons were used and by whom, and published his findings on a blog. I met up with him at Goldsmiths College in South London, where he was giving a talk on using technology to do DIY investigations and citizen journalism. I was just interested in what ha was happening in uh, Libya and Syria. I really only had the resources that were available online. So um, for me, it was really making the most of what was out there. So, you know, finding all these social media posts, these YouTube uh, channels used by Syrian opposition groups, then using things like Google Earth to, you know, get access to satellite mapping Madrid. And what's very interesting now is, you know, an ordinary people can get access to the sort of information that used to be, you know, limited to security services. So if you know how to start, you know, exploiting that information, you can get a much greater understanding of what's happening in conflict zones. Now, traditional journalism would have relied on a person being on the ground and being able to verify the stuff in person. How do you go through the verification process, particularly when you're using footage, say on YouTube, that's been uploaded or Facebook by a citizen using their cell phone? Simple example of that is um, a set of videos we found of rocket launches. And we found these very interesting because they were posted on the same date, they claimed to be from the same location and they seem to be linked to craters we could see on Google Earth inside Ukraine. And the interesting thing was these videos were filmed in Russia. So we want to establish the rocket launches were coming from Russia. So we used um, Google Earth and satellite map imagery and street view imagery to establish the location of each camera. Those um, locations meant that we could then see exactly where the rockets were coming from in the video and map that onto Google Earth. And it just happened all those points intersected in one area. We also found people in the local area uh, making social media posts discussing it and other people tend them not to discuss it because I mean, one of the quotes was, people won't believe you that Russia's firing rockets into Ukraine. We then found a journalist who actually visited the site, spoke to local people and went to the field where the rockets were coming from inside Russia and found the caps from uh, 122 millimeter artillery rockets. So we used lots of different sources from, you know, independent sources more importantly, to verify, you know, not only these were launched in R Russia, but they're also being fired into Ukraine. Higgins started out on his own, but is increasingly moving to collaborate with others. He's worked with traditional media organizations such as the New York Times, but after the downing of Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 last year over Ukraine, he built a network of other open source investigators. After MH17 was shot down, there was quite a few people who um, started doing their own kind of open source investigations, as we called it, into the various images that were um, produced. I contacted a lot of them and kind of brought them together in a working group. And now I have a team of nine volunteers who investigate the conflict in Ukraine. And we've done a huge amount of work on MH17, uh, Russian involvement in the conflict, and developing ideas to you know, use to investigate social media that wasn't being used before. Are you worried about the fact that private tech companies are the intermediaries rather than say uh, public sector organizations, governments, what have you? One big issue we've had with Facebook, for example, is with the Syrian conflict, you kind of have these reporting wars between you know, pro-Assad people and pro-rebel people reporting each other's Facebook pages. And some of these pages have been around for the entire length of the conflict. They contain thousands of photographs, posts, uh, you know, first-hand reports from incidents, and they get shut down. And Facebook is not very good at you know, understanding the historical context of some of these. So it's not just about, you know, the news value of these, but the kind of, you know, looking at them and saying, okay, is this something that's actually useful historically? In the case of the August 21st sound attacks in 2013 in Damascus, I found that the, about 90% of the Facebook pages that had posts about those attacks from local groups had been deleted several months after the attack because of these kind of Facebook reporting wars. Higgins is also aware that it can be dangerous for locals to upload information to the web. He advised one of his collaborators in Syria to change how they posted images to make it less likely for the Assad government to identify them. But he stresses that because the information is being taken increasingly seriously by policymakers and governments, it's having a notable effect. 
I, I did a uh, talk a while ago in Istanbul, and there was a guy there, and he, he said, "I'm, you know, I'm from Syria. I was posting these videos, and um, you know, it's great that you're doing this all with your videos, but all that happens to us is it makes us a target, and it seems that nothing really happens. You know, we risk our lives. You know, we get targeted by the government, yet really all it ends up doing is ending up on blogs. But on the other hand, it's kind of there's there's been a kind of cultural shift, you know, first with um, news organization activism groups and NGOs, more recently now with governments and policy to start using this new kind of information. And those kind of um, videos that were put up, you know, three or four years ago, although they didn't really have a huge effect then, they are part of the bigger picture that's kind of resulted in this shift of thinking. And now we're seeing in other conflicts, this kind of information is taken a lot more seriously, you know, at the highest levels of government. Elliot Higgins, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.